Hello, my name is James Cromwell. Back in 2015, I had the distinct pleasure of seeing a production of Annabelle Souter's play called Watershed in Toronto with her company, Porte Parole, please forgive my French, uh, which I found to be extraordinary. Um, it's a very dynamic, very informing, um, uh, enlightening play, uh, but it's also a piece of theater uh, that's very relatable to by the, an audience. So I, it was an extraordinary production and uh, very important. I met Annabelle and uh, I asked her um, if I could read her other work and she gave me a copy of Seeds, which I read. A wonderful play about a subject very close to me. Actually, they both are, since I am an activist involved in trying to protect the environment that we have. And uh, I, one of the things that I noticed in the two plays, she's deal, Annabelle is dealing with subjects that are not often dealt with in the theater. This is not agitprop theater. It's not even living newspaper. This is theater that combines a kind of journalism with a participation uh, by everybody involved in determining what the truth is uh, as well as a drama, a narrative, which involves a story about somebody's journey as they begin to learn what our environment, uh, what is happening to our environment, what we are doing to the environment, and what our options are. So I think of it as this combination between Bertolt Brecht and Clifford Odets. Bertolt Brecht because of his insightful politics the clarity, the uh, rigor, the, the sparseness, the, um, uh, you know, he, he creates an effect which is called a distancing effect, which is to keep an audience from associating too uh, completely with one specific character and thereby skewing the point of view towards the information that is contained in the play um, and allow the audience to maintain their objectivity as much as they can uh, and to be able to weigh the options and the information and to for themselves to determine what the truth is. And Clifford Odets, because Clifford Odets was dealing with a highly charged context and environment in this country and he managed to take the politics that existed all around him, which were very complex, and he managed to put that into a narrative, a story about human beings, people that are affected by these circumstances, who respond, who share, who feel, who care, and who have a journey from one point of understanding to a greater understanding. We in this country now are faced with any number of crises, three of which are, the first one, of course, is the climate crisis. Uh, which we are now beginning to address in some ways. At least um, ordinary people and organizations, not that governments are, uh, not that corporations are necessarily. And then we also have a crisis which some people are aware of, and more will be very shortly, which is a water crisis, which of course is part of the play called Watershed. And we have another crisis which is going to be called food crisis because if you know anything about what is happening in Syria, or if you know what is happening in Africa, you will see, and if you know what's happening in the United States, where greater and greater areas of agriculturally arable land are being gobbled up by industry and housing development, and we are losing the small farmer, which means we have to rely on large corporations like Monsanto and like Bayer, who have cornered the market because they have invested in the technologies and they have limited not only our options, but they feel absolutely no responsibility. Now, that I'm, see, now I'm editorializing, and that is what she avoids in the play. My attitude is limiting because you're either with me or you're against me. And I think what Annabelle tries to do is be inclusive so that you can make up your own mind, you can be more objective. I'm, I'm deeply in this now, so I have a very strong point of view, but I understand that the food shed 
is incredibly threatened by large agribusiness and these petrochemical companies which control not only the pesticides that are used, which are very injurious, but also the seeds, the very stuff of life from which uh, our, entire, our entire culture is dependent on um, for its survival. All three of the crises affect our survival. They're all interrelated, which is also part of the plays, I believe, because it's the connection that we have to make between one crisis, whether it's water, whether it's food, whether it's the climate, whether it's uh, racial justice, all these things are interrelated. And that's what these plays are. So it is an opportunity for someone to watch and be informed the way we were just discussing, the way television used to inform us, but no longer informs us because it is controlled by large corporations who have really only their point of view, not our point of view. This is our point of view and some of Monsanto's point of view. Um, there is an extraordinary play. It needs to be seen, needs to be done, especially in this country. We have to start discussing these things if we don't, then we will have missed the opportunity to make the kind of adaptation that will allow this species to survive. That's the importance of this play. So I hope you get a chance to see it. Thank you. Hi, my name is Annabelle Suchar. I'm the playwright of Seeds and the artistic director of Poor Parole Theatre Company up here in Montreal, Canada. I wanted to take a moment to tell you a little bit about Seeds because it's a play that we've had significant success touring in Canada since 2012. Over 35,000 Canadians have seen this play from five different provinces uh, in Canada and have been delighted by its mix of entertainment and also uh, engaged uh, civic dialogue about a topic that's really important to Canadians and I think is important to Americans and that's the topic of genetically modified organisms in our agriculture. Um, the play is a documentary or a verbatim play. Uh, I studied at Princeton University in the United States in the 1990s and was very inspired by the work of playwrights like Anna Devere Smith and Moises Kaufman and I brought their brand of theatre back here to Canada. Um, Documentary theater, for some people, you know, it's got a bad rap as being didactic or informational or educational theater. I think anyone who's um, uh, aware of the plays of uh, Smith and Kaufman understand that the best documentary theater can be a great blend of engagement and entertainment, and that's exactly what Seeds is. Uh, it's a play that doesn't take sides about a very hot button issue, that of GMOs, that manages to get behind the headlines and understand um, uh, GMOs from both the side of the biotech company, in this case Monsanto, and the anti-GMO activist, in this case a very fiery Saskatchewan farmer who stood up from, to Monsanto. Um, the reason the play has been so successful in Canada, I think, is because People who are pro-GMO and anti-GMO have come into the theatre and have shared the experience. Um, and audiences have felt that they could embrace and understand an issue uh, that has become overly complex and misunderstood through the ma mainstream media and have a very good time doing so. Uh, the play is told with a lot of suspense and a lot of intrigue. Um, and uh, we've had some incredible satellite activities around the play where representatives of Monsanto and anti-GMO activists like Greenpeace have actually come into the same space and conducted uh, uh, audience talkbacks with, uh, with people. So, um, you know, my interest in bringing it to the States right now is I perceive that the debate around GMOs has become super polarized in the U.S. Uh, and that such a play can really um, help us address that polarization and develop audiences in U.S. theaters. So super psyched to export the sex success we've had with seeds up here in Canada uh, and bring it down to the s uh, south of the border very soon.